Well, good evening and welcome to another episode of Rich Politics with me, your host, Richard Taylor. We have moved from protecting the NHS, flattening the curve, to the idea of vaccinating children and introducing vaccine passports. They said this would never happen. They lied to us. If we say or do nothing, then what does that say about us? Let's vaccinate kids, they say, with a vaccine that doesn't stop the spread and who have almost zero mortality rate to save adults with over a 99% survival rate. Well, to discuss that with me tonight, here on Rich Politics is a commentator and a comedian. Uh, she's you've probably seen on your screens with GB News and Talk Radio. It is the F of S and the wonderful, the one and only Abby Roberts. Abby, welcome to Rich Politics. Hello, my love. Effervescent makes it makes it sound like an Alka-Zeltzer. Um, I love that fizzing in a glass. And, uh, uh, yeah. and you, you, you and I both love a glass of the fizz, so that's appropriate. But um, thank you so much, Rich, for having me on. I, I met it, you for the first time, didn't I? Only only a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, absolutely. It's been an absolute pleasure. And, uh, you know, following you on social media. By the way, folks, don't forget to follow Abby on Twitter. She is fantastic. You, I'm sure you'll you know enjoy a lot of her stuff. I do certainly do anyway. We did. And uh, we, we share a lot of commonality, a lot of things that we disagree with, with the government and politicians. You're a bit like me, really, a bit of a rebel, aren't you? Yeah, definitely a rebel at heart. Um, and I, it's interesting, you know, that it's comedians. I mean, there's only actually a few of us who were really like, you know, <laughs> throwing the grenades of truth. Which you know, we need to at the moment because everything is getting um, very scary. Yeah, let's get straight into that. Then I'm going to talk about my introduction. I mentioned vaccine passports and vaccinating yeah. children. Now, we've seen shocking figures in France this week. Uh, in fact, yesterday, all across social media, of police officers walking around cafes outdoors asking people to prove that they've been vaccinated, handing them their phones. I mean, what yep. do you make of these vaccine passports, Abby? I am absolutely horrified. I was on, um, again, it's very odd, having been a comedian, to suddenly find myself thrust into politics. But as they say, politics chooses you. You don't choose it um, more often than not. Anyway, it, back in um, Easter, I was uh, found myself on Good Morning Britain opposite Edwina Curry, who was, she was very pro-vaccine passports and said, she wouldn't sit next to anyone who hadn't had the vaccine and couldn't prove that, um, you know, it with, with, a, with, a, with a bit of paper. So I was on the opposing side saying, well, I've lived in the Soviet Union. I'm very privileged to have gone to Russia as a kid because of my dad's job. Um, he was a spy, sorry, diplomat. He was a diplomat. And um, so I, I went to Russia <laughs> and I was, I, I, I do you know what? I was, I was a bit nervous then because there was delayed laughter, but I realized we were on Zoom. So anyway, um, and, and I was literally there. I couldn't believe I was back in, I was in the United Kingdom on a TV program saying to Edwina Curry, you've got to be mad. We are not a country that um, goes around saying, you know, papers, please, or in Russian, bumashki, pajalsta, or papira bitten, you know, whichever, or German, whichever language you want to, we're not that country. And, and that was back in Easter, and everyone called me mad, Rich, for saying it. Mm -hmm. Everyone said, oh, you're just, you're just being over the top, blah, blah. Fast forward uh, four or five months, here we are, you know? Yeah, it's just a crazy world, in it? I know some of those scenes, I know that have been, uh, a lot of people have reacted differently to them. I mean, I, I find it abhorrent that uh, any government would overreach into our personal lives and wanting to present our, you know, private medical records, you know, for entry or to access to the freedoms that actually, that are not, they're not privileges, they're our rights. And I think, yeah. you know, the idea that our social liberties can be taken away and, and our civil liberties under this government, it's been a regime that's tyrannical in its way to support this vaccine. And of course, yep. we're going to talk a little bit about uh, vaccinating children in a few moments, but well, what do you think we can do to fight back against these vaccine passports, Abby? What, what, what can we do as members of the public? And members of the public, what I would say, um, I would say for a start, don't have anything on your phone. Don't download any, don't have any apps, don't have any anything. You know, all these people who go, oh, look, I've been pinged by the NHS, whatever. That, that, that is, that's how they get you. So I would say um, resist to every opportunity. Say it is against my human rights. You are eroding my civil, and that's actually a very important thing. Know your rights as a human being. Um, that you don't, you don't, you're not obliged to show um, paperwork which which reveals your uh, private medical information. So I would say, first of all, um, really know your rights. Even if you just have like a couple of little sentences on a bit of paper, carry it around in your pocket um, or on your notes on your on your on your iPhone, and just say, right, I, I know what I'm going to say to somebody if they ask me. And I would say that would be that would be the first step. 
You know, Boris Johnson's approval ratings have gone down massively. And a lot of people yeah. will think it's because of the immigration that we've seen, or mass legal immigration, I should say, that we've seen yeah. happening right now with hundreds a day coming in at the Ken course. But I think a big part of that is the way that he's handled the pandemic towards the latter end, because I, like many others, my friends included, when the first oh. lockdown happened, we all understood. We didn't know what this was. We understood we had to, you know, comply and, and do what the government said. But after 18 months and we began getting more information through and more data and understanding of the virus, we began realizing actually this is this is not just about a virus anymore, Abby. There's something mm. greater at play here. And the yep. government's idea of you know, controlling our everyday lives and even taking away some of those liberties. I mean, how did you were, were you like that at the start of the, the, the lockdown, the first lockdown? Well, actually, um, at the start of the first lockdown, um, I'd, uh, I'd just lost my mother very sadly. Um, she'd been ill for quite a long time. So I was grieving um, and it was all a bit strange. But it, uh, actually, to be honest, after about three weeks, I started to think, hang on a minute, this is very strange. You know, we were, we were basically coming out of the three week lockdown. Then suddenly in June, they introduced masks. And uh, I thought, hang on a minute, masks? But you just said back in March, Patrick Balance uh, and Witty, that masks um, had 40 years plus, uh, you know, evidence that they, 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 were ne they didn't work. I mean, they were just like, you know, it was, it was pointless really wearing them. And then I thought in the summer, you're introducing masks. And that's when, and I started to watch um, uh, other videos, YouTube videos. I started to get, you know, uh, uh, start to uh, what sort of do a bit, a bit of research myself on the Great Barrington Declaration. All those kind of things where I thought I'm going to look at the other side here. I'm going to have a little dig around um, and see what's happening. And then, of course, sure enough, um, it started to <laughs> unravel. You know, the truth. Yeah, it, it certainly did for me as well. I think it woke a yeah. lot of people up, you know, and as I said at the start of it, we were all compliant. We understood this a new virus. Yeah, course, yeah. We were told at the start of this, were we not, you know, that this was the, the, the whole idea of the vaccine was to protect the vulnerable and the elderly, which I so my mother has health conditions. You know, she got yeah. a lung problem, so no problem. She has the vaccine and everything else. And yeah. But someone like myself, who's, you know, 40, I'm 46 years of age, or 47, sorry, 47 for the, I forgot how old I was then. <laughs> <laughs> a 47. It's easily done. Um, I know it is. Um, uh, and I was thinking to myself, well, I, I, I've had COVID twice. Uh, they were like flu like yeah. symptoms. I was ill for three days each time I had it. And I'm still alive. So it, you know, it wasn't it wasn't something that's was going to destroy or kill me. And the idea yeah. that, you know, after that, then they talk about flattening the curve to protect the NHS. Which the NHS is there to protect us, by the way, as you know. And we pay yeah. taxes for that. Um, and people were hero worshipping the NHS, going out clapping every night. And all of a sudden, you know, our hospitals now, you know, they're, they're talking about this massive waiting list because of operations have been cancelled. The mental mm -hmm. health crisis has gone from 5 million re reported last year or the year before to last year, 10 million um, incidents of people reporting mental, mental health issues. That's doubled, 10 million people. I mean, the impact this had on people's lives is absolutely colossal. Yeah. And I wonder if the damage done by the government, whether or not the cure was, you know, is, is better than the disease itself, because it seems to me as if what the government are trying to do now is not only have they imposed this idea of having vaccine passports on us, but they're taking it a step further and now want to vaccinate our children. I mean, what do you think about that? Oh, honestly, I, Rich, I've, some, when I think about it, I, tears come to my eyes. I haven't got children myself, um, but my late husband, uh, we, we didn't have children, but I have nephews. Uh, three nephews, and it I, I get, it makes me sick to my stomach. I can't. It put it this way: a few when I started hearing about the children being vaccinated, I thought we, we've we've crossed the Rubicon. We crossed it a while back, um, in my view, uh, by not discussing the 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 the, um, the 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 safety of the vaccines. But I know that's for a that's for a separate conversation. But this is this is um, where I think good people. And I say that, you know, in all sincerity, good people have to stand up and they have we have to line up like lions with our with our, you know, roaring and say, no, 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 no. To quote the wonderful Mar late Margaret Thatcher, no, no, no. We're not doing it. Yeah, it, it, it's a red line for me, that is. I mean, yeah. I, I'm a, I've got five children. My eldest is 21 and 19. No, for, for our viewers, I've Blimey. said it before. I've said it before here in Rich Politics. My two eldest yeah. sons were 21 and 19 still live with us, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, they, they actually have had the vaccine. I sat down, discussed it with them. They're adults. Right. Right. And I respect their choice and their decision, which is their yeah. choice. Yeah. And they've had it. And me and my wife haven't. And my children certainly will not be having a vaccine because 
there is no long term data over this vaccine. We don't know yeah. the impact it has on children. And they've looked, they keep lowering the age. It's almost, you know, and I, th that is what worries me. And any parent out there that isn't concerned about yeah. a medical intervention into, a chi into their child's life without yeah. any long term data, to me, it's just absolutely absurd. Why do you think the government feel it's important to vaccinate children now when given the, the, the death rate amongst children having the, you know, mm. having the virus is almost non-existent? Yes, exactly. Um, Rich, I've been thinking about this a lot. I mean, as you can tell, I, I, I mull this stuff over a great deal. Um, and when I'm on GB News, uh, I, 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 I am very passionate and I, I make no apology for that, for being angry about this. I would say, you know what, even if it, it, by accident or design, uh, you know, when the when the virus came out of Wuhan lab, whether it, whether it was by design or by accident, the powers that be, the, the, the global powers that be, see this as an opportunity to, to vaccinate, to medicate the entire globe, because by doing that, they are able to control more information. And, by the way, to say, we've got more vaccines for you coming down the line, because once they've got you, then you know they've got you your, your vaccine passport. You're in. You know you're you. So this is this is a real shift. People have to understand in liberty, in 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 global liberty, not just the UK. Everywhere. You know we're seeing it now. So um, I, I I I'm very wary. You know, obviously, of sort of putting my tin my tin foil hat on. But honestly, um, all the stuff I, I've already said that people said I was crazy to be saying it has has come to pass. So you think yeah. to yourself, well, who, who's the crazy one here? But you know? it's, in, it's, it's interesting as well, you know, at, at the start, like, like when, the, when it first came the pandemic, I mean, I, a lot of conspiracy theories were going around, as you know, and, and yeah. I would look at them and I wouldn't, I wouldn't pass judgment, but I wouldn't comment. I think they're lunatics. And I have yeah. to admit to you, you're alive tonight and apologize mm -hmm. to a lot of people because what they said, some of it is coming true. And I know, and I look like a fool because I didn't believe that this would ever happen. And the fact is that, you know, as you've pointed out, where, where does this actually take us? Where does this go? This global idea and the big pharma companies were making tens, hundreds of mm. billions of pounds. In fact, a report came out this morning from Pfizer and some other the big uh, companies that are making the pharma companies that are making billions of pounds off the backs of people's fear. And yes. what's more frightening is that we've got government officials in number 10 who, let's be honest, we all know because of the Freedom of Information Act, who have got invested interest in some of these pharma companies, as well as yes. the PPE. We saw that. David Cameron, you know, dodgy Dave, as Dennis Skinner once <laughs> called him, um, yeah. was, you know, little, just recently he's made a $10 million profit from the company that he was involved in. And I think people yeah. read that, but still they don't, be, they don't seem to wake up to those facts, Abby. They still, you know, yeah. think that this is, this is about protecting themselves and their children and their family. If we don't, it's the end of the world. It's the apocalypse, you know? I mean, yeah. how, how can we get this message out to people to say, look, take a step back, look at the facts for what they are, and don't just agree with everything the government says. Because when the state steps in to, to, the, to our private lives and starts telling us to inject something into our children, to, car to carry a vaccine passport, which is a digital ID, we should start questioning that, shouldn't we? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's really interesting, you know, because I, I'm, I consider myself on the right of politics, a classical liberal, as, as Boris Johnson was meant to be. Uh, but look at what happened. Um, so I, I am very much for the free market. I'm absolutely in favour of that. What we're seeing now is a kind of um, crony capitalism where, you know, everyone, they have, they've got the fingers in the pies. They don't really care. Um, about about the uh, about the ordinary man and woman on the street um, being able to lift themselves out of uh, of not being as well off and all the rest of it. I mean, look at Matt, Matt Hancock. He actually owns a genome company. A lot of people don't know this, but Matt Hancock it has very much has a vested interest in these uh, in these in in, in the, the money that big pharma are making. I should also say, Rich, that. This is not the only time this has happened with Big Pharma. 1976 and 2009, uh, during the swine flu uh, craziness that happened, 20% um, um, of America was vaccinated in 76, and the lawsuits were unending for the rest of that uh, decade. Um, and then the 2009, the same thing happened with swine flu. Big Pharma jumped on the vaccines um, without really having done much testing. You know, proper testing. So this is this is not unusual. But what is unusual is that we've got a so-called conservative government, who I call the communist conservative government, um, who are acting 
to all intents and purposes, like the you know, like like the Soviets or or the Chinese yeah. Communist Party, you know. Yeah, we talk about the the failure of government in some of these areas we talk about uh, this evening. Also, the, yeah. the the mainstream media have a part to play in this, and some blame must be shifted onto them because they've been the propaganda, the mouthpiece for a lot of what the government have been saying. Yeah. I mean, I, I I was watching a, a protest outside the BBC. They might have been in the wrong building, apparently, but it turned into violence. And f- for the record, I don't condone violence. However. There's only so much people can take. And I, I fear the future that if the government keeps dividing society, as it's doing mm. now, to mm. what I called or phrased, as many others have, a medical apartheid, which some people don't like me saying, but I think it is, this yeah. two-tiered system, then people are going to lose their cool. They're going to lose their rag. Now, I don't agree with that. I, don't, I believe mm. in peaceful protesting. But suffice to say, we've seen it across countries in Europe and around the world, especially in America, where people turn to the last resort, which is violence. Yeah. And I fear that a country like Britain, which has been very circumspect and very upper lip, you know, kind of prop, prim and proper. Yeah, yeah. We're going, we're going down this road where society is changing so much so fast that we're going to see more of this. I, I don't want to see it on our streets because of my children and their future, but we're going to yeah. see it. And, it's, and I blame the government, but I also blame mainstream media. For example, that protest that kicked off uh, this week in London at the BBC studios, um, th- they were accused of being anti-vaxxers. Now, from my understanding, they weren't an anti-vax protest. They were there against vaccine passports and against injecting children with this, um, with the, with the vaccine. So I wondered yeah. to myself, you know, when they call us anti-vaxxers, because I am like you, I'm against vaccine passports and I'm against vaccinating children with no long-term data available to us. Yeah, but I'm not an anti-vaxxer. You know, even if people are. It's their right to be anti vaxxers isn't it? It's their choice. What do you think yeah. the mainstream media have done and how have they been part of this whole this whole campaign to, to demonise people like us? Well, I think um, it, it's been going on a long time, Rich. Uh, the mainstream media has slowly, over the last maybe 10, 15 years, started to become um, a sort of propaganda machine, having one view. Uh, you know, when you watch the BBC, they only had one view uh, and that was it. There was nobody who really, you know, and that's been going on for a long, long time. But the, the media have been used definitely in this uh, 18 plus months uh, as a propaganda machine. There's no doubt in my mind um, that that's what happened. And, and of course, you know, things like anti-vaxxer, that is a very convenient way to lump everyone into one group. It's like saying, oh, are you a COVID denier? Or, you know, no, I don't deny that um, there is a virus, but of course it's very easy to say you're a COVID or even you're a climate change denier. And it's like, that's absurd because the climate has been changing for the last billion years. So to say that, do you see what I mean? It's it's very easy. Um, And the left, by the way, are particularly good uh, at slogans. So they will say, "This this is it. And of course the right tend to just go, oh, we want to be a bit more sensible and a bit more careful about what we're doing. And it's time for us to kind of get, you know, uh, uh, start standing up for ourselves. Well, on that note, on that note, Abby, it's been wonderful having you on. A short time we've had together. It's absolutely fantastic. Oh, cheers, Rich. Now, you know, what's next for Abby Robbins? Where are we going to see you? When can we find you? How do people find you? And where, where are you on next? How do people find me? Well, I'm not going to give you my address. <laughs> You've probably done the street, but uh, I'm not, we don't know each other quite that well. But um, on Twitter, it's at Abby Roberts. So A-B-I Roberts, uh, proud, proud Welsh, uh, Welsh lady, of course. although you can't tell by my accent. Um, and you can also find me, I've got a website, abbyroberts.com. I'm on GB News, talk radio, and I'm doing um, my first solo pull out live show called This Lady's Not For Burning. It's very early work in progress on September the 26th in London at the Museum well, of I'll Comedy. Well, I'll definitely, so, definitely be looking out for that. Uh, I, I, is it live? Will, will I be able to come and see that? Uh, you bloody well can. I, I hope so. What, yeah, what, it's live. What, it's was like, the, what, was the, what was the date again? At 26th of September. So ah, Sunday, right, brilliant. Sunday I've, got evening. A, I've got a charity football match on for a young man who's got brain damage on the 12th of September that I've organised. Oh. The week, week or two after, I'll definitely be up for that. I'd love to come down to that. And I hope to catch you down in London on my next visit. Abby, thanks for coming on Rich Politics and enjoy the rest of the God bless you. God bless you, sir. Well, folks, what an evening. It's been fantastic to have Abby Roberts on. I hope, like many of you across the country, like myself, you know, we won't just sit back and accept what the government say, the state interfering with our everyday lives. We have to stand against any regime that wants to vaccinate children, in my opinion, and, of course, introduce vaccine passports, which is discriminatory, if nothing else. And I look forward to catching you on another episode of Rich Politics very, very soon. Take care. Bye for now.